This is part 62 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to log our own messages, warnings and exceptions using the iLogger interface provided by ASP.NET Core. At the moment, we have this application running in debug mode and if we take a look at the debug output window, notice we have a lot of information logged by default by ASP.NET Core. We discussed this logging information in our previous videos in the series. Now, if there is an unhandled exception, the code within this error controller is executed. We discussed implementing this error controller in our previous videos in the series. Now, what we want to be able to do is, if there is an exception, we want to log the information about that exception. And that exception information should be displayed along with the log information that we already have in the debug output window if we are running the project from Visual Studio. In case if we are running this pre same project from the command line, then the log information along with our own exception information must be displayed on the console. For that, we first need to inject the iLogger interface provided by ASP.NET Core. So let's stop the project and then include a constructor within our error controller class so we can inject the iLogger interface. Let's bring in microsoft.extensions.logging namespace in which this iLogger interface is present. It also takes a generic parameter and I'm going to pass the type of this error controller class as the argument for the generic parameter. If you're wondering why we are doing this, take a look at the log output that we have right here. Look at this line of log. This log is coming from the webhost class. How do we know that? We have the name of the class here. We have actually the fully qualified name of the class. We have the complete namespace here, including the name of the class. By looking at this, we can say these first three lines of log are coming from the webhost class. So basically, we're using the fully qualified name of the class that is logging the information as the log category here. We use the log category to group log information. Similarly, by specifying the type of our error controller class, we will be able to group all the log messages that are coming from this error controller class. We'll look at that in action in just a bit. For now, let's name this constructor parameter logger. Let's also generate a private field by pressing control period and then select the second option, create and initialize field logger. We can now use this private read-only field logger throughout our error controller to log our own messages, warnings and exceptions. I'm actually going to use it in this error action method. We know this action method will be executed if there is an unhandled exception. At the moment, we are displaying the exception details in the view. We know displaying exception details to the end user is a security risk. So instead of displaying them in the view, let's actually log those exception details. For that, let's use the logger. Notice on this logger instance, we have several methods that start with the word log. For example, if you want to log information, use log information. Similarly, if you want to log critical errors, use log critical. In our case, we want to log an exception. So I'm going to use log error. To log the exception message, let's use C sharp 6 string interpolation. With string interpolation, we use dollar and then our string. So the message is the path and we have to include the path here and we're going to get the path from the exception details object that we have here. This object has got the path property. So with string interpolation, the expression that we have in the curly braces will be replaced with the expression value at runtime in this location. That is string interpolation. So this path through an exception and we want to log the exception itself. So I'm going to use another expression here and to get the exception details on this exception details object, we have the error property which returns the exception. Let's break this down to another line so we can see the complete code. While we are here, let's also clean up this error view. Error view is present in the shared folder. We don't want to display the exception details anymore. So let's delete all of this HTML. Now, if we take a look at our error controller, we've got another action method here 
This action method is executed whenever the user tries to navigate to a URL that does not match with any route in our application. So it results in 404 and this is the method that is executed. Now what we want to do is if there is a 404 error, we want to log it as a warning. So instead of displaying the details on the not found view, let's actually log them. So I'm going to delete these two lines of code and then use the logger instance. On this, let's use log warning method. The message that we want to log is 404 error occurred. We want to display the path that caused the 404 error. So let's include an expression here. And to get the path that caused the 404 error, we use the status code result variable. On that, we have the original path property. In addition to this, let's also log the query string. To get the query string on the status code result object, we have original query string property. Finally, let's clean up this not found view. It's present in the shared folder. We don't want to display the path that caused the 404 error and the query string in the view. So let's delete those two H1s and run our project in debug mode. Now, if we take a look at the debug output window in Visual Studio, notice we have a lot of information logs and all these information logs category name start with the word Microsoft. We don't want all these information logs here. So what I'm going to do is in app settings.json for this category Microsoft, I'm going to change the log level here from information to warning. So basically we are saying only display the Microsoft category logs with a CVRD equal to warning or higher. Don't display the information logs. We'll discuss this log level setting in detail in our upcoming videos. So let's stop debugging and run the project again in debug mode. Notice now in the debug output window, we don't have all those Microsoft information logs. Now let's click the view button. We know it is going to throw an exception. This line is throwing an exception. So let's continue on that. We are redirected to our custom error view. At the moment, we are not displaying exception details to the end user, which is good. And if we take a look at the output window, notice we have the exception details logged here. Take a look at the category name right here. It has the fully qualified name of our error controller class. And that's because if we take a look at our error controller, we are using the type of our error controller class as the generic argument for iLogger. And because of that, we see the fully qualified name of this error controller class as the category name in the log output right here. So by looking at this category name, we can say this log is coming from error controller. And because on the logger instance, we're using log error method in the log, we see it is logged as error. Finally, we also have the exception message, the path, this path slash home slash details slash one through an exception. And we have the complete exception details here. Now let's try to navigate to a URL that does not match with any route in our application. Let's also include some query strings here. Email equals pregame at gmail.com. Let's include another query string ABC equals XYZ. We are redirected to the not found view. And if we take a look at the output window, notice we have our warning logged here. It's coming from the error controller. We have the fully qualified name of the class as the category. We're using log warning. So we see it as a warning. And then here is the log message. 404 error occurred path equals. This is a path that caused the 404 error. And we also have the complete query string. At the moment, we're running the project from Visual Studio in debug mode. So we see the logs here in the debug output window. If we are running the same project from the command line, we see these logs displayed on the console window as well. To log your own custom messages, warnings, and exceptions, inject iLogger service into the class or controller where you need the logging functionality. 
specify the type of the class or the controller into which we have injected the iLogger service as a generic argument. This allows us to use the fully qualified name of that class or controller as the category name. We have seen this in action just now. Finally, on the iLogger service instance, we have got several methods like log information, log warning, log error, etc. Use these methods to log what you want. At the moment, we are logging warnings and exceptions to the debug window and console window if we run the project from the command line. In our next video, we'll discuss how to log these to a file using a third-party logging provider. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.